rising from bed and meeting the sun. So he's introduced himself. And this is going to be a song about himself, a song of me. It's just me. I'm the hero of this poem. Not John Wayne, not uh, Mel Gibbs or whatever his name is. Not one of those, you know, low-life uh, people. Uh, Whitman is the hero of this. Have you reckoned a thousand acres much? And he starts asking his questions. Changes the rhythm entirely. Have you reckoned the earth much? And again, the rhythm is pure American. Have you practiced so long to learn to read? And again, I don't know how he's done it, what the rhythm is, but it's got a pure rhythm. Have you practiced so long? And that's where his genius is. So that's why I think he has been acknowledged to be, with all his shortcomings, and they are numerous, the greatest American poet uh, up till these days. And um, you say, well, why? Well, something natural. I mean, Emerson was not greeting something um, accidentally. He, he recognized this power here. Uh, he sometimes he imitated himself. He tried to do it over and over again. He began to you know, fall short, but still at his best. He, he, it was something quite um, rising out of the American uh, people itself, the uneducated mass of the American people. Um, have you practiced so long to learn to read? Have you felt so proud to get to the meaning of poems? Stop this day and night with me. You shall possess the origin of all poems. You shall possess the good of the earth and sun. There are millions of suns left. So now it's a spiritual message. It's not just a poem. And he knows that there are millions of universes, the same as our modern scientists know. You shall no longer take things in second or third hands. And you will start to think for yourself. You're not going to take it from me. You're not going to take it from Eisenman. You're not going to take it from some other professor or whoever else. You're going to start to filter it for yourself. And that's what he wants you to, you, you to do. And your greatest compliment to him would be to do that. Um, you shall possess the good of the earth. There are millions of earth sons left. You shall no longer taste things second or third hands or look through the eyes of the dead nor feed on the specters in books. You shall not look through my eyes either, nor take things from me. You shall listen to all sides and filter them from yourself, yourself, just as myself, the self in Hinduism, Atman, and so on. But for Whitman, a slightly different self. Was Whitman aware of all these other religions? Yeah, he'd been to the library, he'd read about it, and you'll see that he knows about uh, Atman and uh, Brahman, he mentions them at some point. You know, these things have been translated, and he was very up to date. I have heard that the talkers were talking, the talk of the beginning and the end, but I did not speak about a beginning and an end. Again, we're in a religious environment here. Uh, there was never any more inception than there is now, and here is the pulsing rhythm of his uh, poem. And anyone can read it. You see, that's the great thing. You can take it to your boyfriend or girlfriend, you can read it to them, and they can, they, they can re react. Because it's ordinary English. It's not pretentious. It's still understandable 150 years later. There was never any more inception than there is now, nor any more youth rage than there is now, and will never be any more perfection than there is now, nor any more heaven and hurt or hell than there is now. Urge and urge and urge, always the proxy and urge of the world, out of the dimness, opposite equals advance, always substance, always increase, always sex. And again, I'm not sure I agree with every word he says, but one responds to his, his rhythm. Again, the sex emphasis. Always a nitto identity, always distinction, always a breed of life. To elaborate is no avail. Learn and unlearn. Feel that or so there. Feel it. It's nothing intellectual. Sure is the most certain, sure plumb in the uprights, well untreated, braced in the beams. Now he's talking about his own body. Now he considers himself like a horse or something. Uh, or, your, or your body. Stout as a horse, affectionate, haughty, electrical. When he says electrical, he means sexed up. I and this mystery, here we stand. Here I am. I stand before you. This huge mound of electrical flesh, braced in the beams, sturdy, and so on. The I and this mystery. The, the mystery is he and his soul. It's the mystery of the soul. And he doesn't make any assumptions about it. Clear and sweet is my soul. He goes on to tell you the way he's talking about it. Clear and sweet is all that is not my soul. So look, I'm not going to put one down in favor of the other. I'm not like these people who are meditating and so on and tell you that the body is evil and the soul is pure and so on and so All of it is good to me. There is no evil in me. This is a new moral message, an American democratic moral message. You take it or leave it. You can go back to the old one if you want, or you can pick up where he starts. 
and um, he's not a religious teacher in the sense that he has a movement, but um, he is saying something about the things we're talking about. And sweet is all, clear and sweet is my soul, and fair and sweet is all that is not my soul. Lacks one, lacks both. The unseen is proved by the seen. He doesn't know if they're separate or not, but he doesn't think one is worse or lower than the other. So that becomes unseen and receives proof in its turn. I am satisfied. Oh, wait, wait, he goes on. Showing the best, abiding the worst, ages vex, age vexes age, knowing the perfect fitness, equanimity of things, while they discuss I am silent, I go bathe and admire myself. Let them jabber. Let people like in this class talk. I'm going to, take, I'm going to go to the river and, 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 and have a swim. Welcome is every organ and attribute of me, and any man hearty and clean. And he, he says, I am perfectly clean, and every attribute and part of me is perfectly clean, and any man hearty and clean is welcome to me, too. And he's saying to men here, not women at the moment. But later on, you're right. There is a bisexual, if you want to use modern terminology to, to refer to him. I think he's just sexual. I don't think it matters which way it goes. I don't think there were women available to him. And I don't think he was uh, in the money enough to probably afford street walkers.